Alrighty, so Tokyo Ghoul Re chapter 121. Quite an interesting chapter. Uh, we get a lot of different perspectives in this chapter surrounding different people, uh, as well as some interesting faces could potentially reappear in the future. But I'll get onto that in a little bit. So we start off the chapter with Akira kind of confronting Kaneki for the second proper time, I should say. This is when they actually have their big actual talk. Akira seems still very confused on her situation. Obviously, she's very weird around Kaneki because of the fact that he's no longer Hayase Sazaki, but he explains that he he remembers everything from being high as a considers himself still lonely and you know needs her support and everything along the sorts and she's not really buying into it all too much it's more so she's just very weird about it obviously her life has completely changed at this point and it's going in a very weird direction and Kaneki is I guess not the character that can fix her and sort her out considering Kaneki is very lost and Akira also being very lost they just don't really mesh well together right now there's nothing Kaneki can do to help Akira any more than she is so she basically leaves and she confronts Armon now Armon is the person to I guess I guess put faith back into her because I want to say Armon and her are kind of in the same situation. Obviously, Akira is not a girl, but she's basically getting treated like one at this point, considering she cannot go back to the CCG and she's wanted by the CCG. So you can kind of say that Armon has gone through the same thing. He's talking to her in this chapter and he's trying to convince her to, you know, don't give up. I will help you through it. Uh, and he actually kisses her. So, so this brings us back to the original manga where they had a bit of romance, but they never really pursued it, obviously, because of their situation and their partnerships, which is a little bit weird. So now, now, Armour and Akira kind of like confirm coupling, which is pretty good. This will put Akira on the right mindset, I want to believe, considering that Armon is basically falling underlying Kaneki to some degree. As of yet, I don't think he's 100% convinced that he has to work right beside Kaneki, but their causes do align. You know, they have the same motives, and at this point, I believe Armon's going to be sticking around for a good bit, and he's going to be helping Akira kind of, I guess, grow accustomed to everything that's going on. So, a good beginning for Akira, a pretty good start. Now, what was interesting in this chapter was Yuri, Suzuya, and and Seiko and a bunch of other characters actually found out that Furuta did not kill Hayase Sasaki. You remember how Furuta bring out a fake Kaneki or Hayase Sasaki and killed him in public at the ceremony, basically? This small knit group that Yuri is with at the moment has figured that out. They also figured out that Furuta is a big liar at this point. They can't really do anything about it at the moment. This is a big start, though, because I always believed Suzuya would be the first person to kind of catch on very slowly. Now that a bunch of people have also figured out that Furuta is working with different ghouls, but they just can't really connect who with. The fact that he's been lying and doing all this other sneaky shit, they're very suspect of him at the moment. They've got their eyes focused on him, which is a very big start. As well as Seiko was super happy that, you know, she found out that Hayase Sasaki didn't actually get killed. I'm excited to see how this expands for the CCG. Obviously, the CCG has gone through a complete change at the moment, and it's turning into something completely different. Since the beginning, I said a lot of people from the CCG will most likely jump to Kaneki's group or something alongside of a human group that works with Kaneki's group or something. And this is kind of the start of it, the fact that people are figuring out that Furuta is lying and being very mysterious and working with girls, especially because he introduces Dr. Kanao to Yui, which is a very big thing. Interesting conversation they have surrounding reviving people. Me and Jalen have been talking about this Arata situation uh, for quite a bit now and like characters that could potentially come back. And after this chapter, I'm actually quite convinced that a lot of characters could potentially come back as monstrosities, just crazy ass beings, right? Because obviously reviving someone's not an easy task. And the fact that Dr. Kanao is doing it, it's going to be a weapon of sorts. So, because Furuta himself mentioned Noro, potentially could see Noro again. Definitely, most likely, will see uh, Arata. Now, maybe even Arima. That might be a little bit of a stretch, considering I don't know where Arima's body is, but I'm sure if they're going to start reviving people, it's going to be as a weapon form, and they're going to be monstrosities. So, I am super excited for this, especially because Yui was a little bit skeptical of this idea, you know, like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then Furuta turns around with a glass jar with Haru's head in it. Remember how Haru died? So, there's abundance of ghoul variants popping up now, which has got me super excited. Obviously, Dr. Canal is getting introduced as a CCG scientist at this point, so everything is slowly unraveling and it's getting very complex. These amount of monsters, ghouls that are getting produced by Dr. Canal, so I'm super excited to see them and see how much power they actually hold. Now, the final bit of the chapter, Toka and Kaneki finally have their conversation, and there's been this question that Toka wanted to ask Kaneki for a very long time. They sit down and she literally asks him, are you a virgin? I don't know if that's the legit translation for the chapter, but I think it is. Don't know where the fuck this is coming from. I'm guessing she's trying to be more like upfront about it at this point. Just a very weird way to end the chapter. Uh, I think this is going to kick off the Toka and Kaneki shipping a lot more now, considering we don't see shit like this in Tokyo Ghoul. So, a bit of romance in this chapter. Armon and Akira, Toka and Kaneki, Furuta and Haru, <laughs> I don't fucking know, but I'm super excited to see where the story goes next week. But with that being said, I'm actually going to end the video for you. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.